Hi, I'm Prince of Fun, and we're gonna do a quick post processing of this scan of a car tire in um, Extra Hub software. It's the most recent, recent version. You can see I have two scans. I have a scan of the top, so we rename it to top, and I have a scan of the bottom of the tire. So we make the bottom. Next, I will enable the orthogonal view so you can see the difference. So that's quite a nice feature to reduce, uh, remove the perspective. And this allows the cutting tool to be used more efficiently. I could have also used like directly while scanning the plane detection or the plane creation, um, but I simply <laughs> forgot. So next one is we will brush on this tire and select the connected domain. Okay. I'm missing a small part here. So we will also brush this one. And now we are right. So I can remove all the chunk data we don't need. Most data you've seen is like from um, market geometries I've used to make the scanning process easier. The scan was performed in marker, uh, marker laser scanning at 0.5 millimeters resolution. I also have a more high detail scan of the writing on the tire, um, which we will process afterwards. So we don't need this data can use the brush again to create our connected domain. I guess you already did the data down there since I also did the scan from the other side. So it looks fine. Maybe with the, we'll still need to remove these market geometries. I may have been a bit overboard in with them. Normally the market geometries aren't picked up um, but since they're like coated in a very dark uh, paint or spray paint, but since the tire is also um, black plastic um, or black rubber, this um, method doesn't really work in this case. So you just have to delete them manually if needed. Okay. Here you have also like the same cakes with some of the market geometries remaining. So I'll just quickly remove them. You can see like the very faint mesh generated by them, but it's like no real um, hassle removing them. So here we go. Now let's save the edit. And in the next step, we will align the two scans the extra hub software is quite potent in aligning since I can simply use the uh, mark alignment and even nicer it is actually an automatic mark alignment. So here you can see it aligned quite nicely. Sorry, it can just exit. It's Okay, now I guess I have to manually check the markers. There's also like, <laughs> I may have placed them too regularly. <laughs> it could well be. And that's always like a bit of a reason or a, a risk when placing markers that you're intuitively trying to place them as regularly as possible and you're have to like constantly remind yourself of um, arranging them like a chaotic order and this can be quite, um, be quite uncommon. So let's look, okay. This now looks great. And I guess we can directly go to meshing. Let's see, we have 8 million points currently. I will limit it to 4 million triangles, or maybe let's do 5 million. So the Einstein rocket captures quite a lot of data. 
we also enabled the marker hull filling and the rest of the settings will be kept at their default values. So we'll now preview the mesh and let's see how it is looking. Keep in mind the resolution is only at 0.5 millimeters. I would say this is like a very nice resolution for the size of object. In the next scan we will also see the resolution at 0.1 millimeters. Um, you can even go longer, lower, so there's the option for 0.05 millimeters, but I would say there's like diminishing returns, so the, the files are getting bit, bigger and bigger, and um, I, I don't need it to <laughs> the detail at, at some point. So let's just wait for the results, and I may cut out this bit um, to spare you from the processing time. So maybe let's head a, have a look at the resource usage. Okay, the CPU is well utilized. So it looks great, but we have the marker holes and I will fill them out. Ah, those weren't the marker holes, so the holes used by the geometries. So I will do the manual hole filling and in this process is is basically identifying all the existing holes and I can just select them so it actually takes up quite some resources the whole fitting. <laughs> so let's see. But generally speaking, the results look very fine. Wait a minute, I will just do the automatic hole filling parameter size. Let's try it. Hopefully this is enough, but it looks great. So confirm. So here we have the high resolution scan at 0 0.1 millimeter. I will just isolate um, part of the scan now with the writing, so I don't have like too much um, too much points to worry about and I want to scan it on Sketchfab and there's like a limitation to 100 megabytes upload size and this allows me to um, like focus on these high, high detail parts and um, not having to, to reduce the quality afterwards. So now the scan is processing. It looks quite nice. So we will go straight to the post processing. I will use the recommended parameters. However, oh, there, there are still five million points. Okay, um, I will like preview it now, and I have to limit it to an upload size of 100 megabytes for Sketchfab. Mm -hmm. Um, I will be back when the processing is finished, but ah, okay, it was quicker than thought. So, nice. We have 2.5 million triangles, and I guess we can see here, what's quite a nice um, feature is, of course, we have the mesh optimization, but you also have the simplification. And what I really, really like is it actually shows how big the output files are. So like not only the, the polygon count, but also the actually megabyte size of the SCL and OBJ. So that's quite useful for me, since I often like share the results, upload them to, to different sites like printable, Sketchfab, and I just see like what's the, uh, the target. For me, it's 100 megabytes of Sketchfab. So you can see, okay, actually, it's right under 100 megabytes. For me, it's like the, the 
target 2.5 million triangles, it's okay. That's roughly one megabytes, so we don't even need to reduce it and I will upload it to Sketchfab now.